Hi, I'm James Muir and this is a screencast for Make More Noise. What we're going to have a look at this afternoon is bypassing plugins. So first of all, we'll look at it from a technical standpoint, why it's a good habit to get into. And then second, we'll look at it from a creative point of view, have a little look at some automation, and I'll show you a neat key command for bypassing plugins in the mixer window. OK, so where are we? Well, we've got a percussion drum loop up here in our range window. We've got two plugins inserted, the Synalxis 3G plugin, which is a meter plugin, which is free from Synalxis.com, and the TubeTech CR1B from SoftTube, which is uh, not free from SoftTube.se, if memory serves. OK, so let's have a listen to our loop with no processing on. OK, fairly standard loop that's peaking at just under 0 dB, as you can see there by looking at the logic meters. I'm now going to unbypass the 3G plugin, just clear it by clicking in the interface there, and we'll have a quick look at what this meter says about the volume we're achieving. OK, so it says that we've got peaks, the loudest part of the waveform, at just under 0 dB, 0.34 and 0.15 on the right hand side there and then the RMS value which is the average root mean square of minus 9 minus 10 on the uh, left and right hand side there. Okay so let's talk about this from the point of view of using a compressor. What a compressor does is turn down the loudest points uh, so you get a more consistent volume all the way through and then most compressors will have a gain knob like this one does here which enables you then to make that gain back up so if you knock off 3 dB, you can then turn it back up by 3 dB, which means that your audio stays at the same volume, but it will be more consistent in volume. It will have a better average all the way through. So leaving that gain knob on naught, we've got it at um, threshold set at minus 10 here. So I think from memory it's compressing about 3 dB. Let's unbypass that and have a quick listen to that, looking here at the tube tech meter to see how much compression we're getting. <laughs> OK, as I said, it's compressing between 3 and 5 dB. And if we go back to our synopsis, you'll see that we then were getting peaks of minus 9.71 and 11.51 minus an RMS of more like minus 20. So we obviously now need to use this gain knob to make back up that difference. So I'm going to drop it back into play and then I'm going to turn up the gain so that we're getting it peaking and RMSing at roughly the same level as it was before we used the compressor. <laughs> OK, that's more like where we were before. Now, why did I go to all the trouble of doing that and spend 30 seconds figuring out matching those levels? Well, the human ear has a tendency to prefer louder sounds. So in a blind A-B test, most people with an ill-informed ear will pick the louder signal most times. Now, obviously, this is something you can get used to when you're mixing. You, you, know, you train yourself over the course of years to be less fooled by those kind of effects. But it's still a really useful habit to have. Just make sure that when you're processing, you're actually improving the sound rather than just making it louder. So now if we bypass back and forth as the loop plays, we shouldn't um, perceive much difference in volume, but we should be listening to the difference in the tone. Because the difference in volume isn't there, we can be definite about whether we imp we're improving the tone rather than just making it louder. So I'm going to drop that loop back into play, flick the bypass on and off if you watch where the uh, mouse cursor is going. And then that way we can make an informed judgment about whether we prefer the sound. Okay, well, to my ears, that tube text making it sound much louder, much punchier. But if you actually look at it in pure mathematical terms, we haven't achieved that by turning it up. We've achieved it by making it more dense, having more average volume. And also, obviously, the TubeTech CL1B is a fantastic sounding plug-in compressor. 
So that's the technical overview of bypassing plugins. Whatever you're doing, adding EQs, even to some degree adding things like reverbs or especially exciter style effects, you want to be always sure you're improving the sound and not just making it louder. So that's a really neat way of doing that. Use the bypass functions on the plugins, lots of ABs backwards and forwards, and spend a bit of time making sure you've matched the gains so that when you bypass backwards and forwards, you're not changing it in mathematical terms, you're just changing the tone of it. Okay, um, I'm going to cut away now. Uh, I'll probably do the creative use of bypassing a plugin as a separate tutorial. So I've been James Muir. Thanks for watching.